my name is uh, Tony O'Reilly. I have been a human rights activist with the Disabled Persons Movement for over 30 years. I think there's been a number of positive changes. Um, uh, not least, of course, um, uh, legislation has, has, has been seriously advanced in the last, uh, in the last uh, 22 years, uh, which didn't exist. And if you think about it, the last 22 years is quite a small, short period of time, but we've got the Disability Discrimination Act, we have laws prohibiting discrimination in employment, in the goods and services. Um, at least now we have a debate on the treatment of people with mental health issues in relation to the mental capacity legislation and the debate around Article 12 in terms of ratifying the Convention and the delay in the Republic, for example, in terms of ratification of the Convention, but at least the debate is there. I think one of the huge changes for me um, uh, from, a, from an ideological standpoint is that disabled people are beginning to understand that they are human beings and are holders of rights and are entitled to be treated as human beings, um, that they're not a constituency of special needs um, or, a, or simply um, being characterised as a burden on the state. Yes, at the moment they are being characterised as that by government and indeed by a number of, um, by a number of um, key government personnel both in the UK and indeed in the Northern Ireland Assembly. Um, but to a large extent there is a, a broader recognition now that people do have to understand that we, we are human beings and we are entitled to fundamental human rights and I think that's a huge change, that's a huge sea change and I don't necessarily think we'll see the positive outcomes of that in my lifetime um, but I think uh, the seeds of that will, will have a basis for, for the human rights movement going forward in the next 20, 30, 40 years. I think, I think um, the, the fact that um, deep um, disabled persons led organisations exist, even if only one exists, but the fact that there has been a, a, an effort to, to um, develop disabled persons led organisations is a positive in itself. Um, but the, the fact that there's, there are so few of them is down to a number of factors. Um, I think that there has been improvements, but the fact that there is no cohesive collective movement of disabled people, including representative organisations, and that we don't have something like, um, you know, like the disability sector platform that, that there was with the age sector platform, which showed a much stronger commonality of issues, means that we're never going to get, uh, we're never going to develop things as quickly as I would like. Um, the forum would like to see a strong coalition um, of disabled persons movements, representative organisations get together and at least agree six to eight common things that need to be addressed by government, by state parties, by private organisations, by society at large. But that is unlikely to happen because of the the interpolitical conflict that generally exists within the sector and also the increasing demand for separateness um, um, by some parts of the sector in terms of the mental health sector, uh, deaf people for example wanting that distinction um, rather than sort of looking at like, the commonality of a, of a general broader alliance. But looking backwards, can you pick, do, do, do any can specific campaign or conference or project or initiative stick in your mind as something that was a lightning rod for positive change or does it not really work like that? Uh, no, actually um, uh, one of the campaigns and it was a, a failed campaign I suppose in, t in the sense that there was no uh, Bill of Rights for Northern Ireland at the end of it uh, was the Bill of Rights campaign, at least in terms of um, getting disabled people locally mobilised and involved in the debate on human rights. The Bill of Rights campaign um, in, uh, back in, in, the early, in, the early, in the early thousands w was a lightning rod because I think it, it gave people an awareness that they were uh, uh, human beings entitled to human rights and they were, they were getting the opportunity to engage um, with both 
the, you know, the commissions at the time, the Human Rights Commission and the Equality Commission, and the very fact that we were having that debate at a Northern Ireland wide level and had extensive coverage at a Northern Ireland wide level, to me was a lightning rod that things are possible if the sector is willing to stand together. Going back, you, you, you mentioned the Disability Discrimination Act. What would you say to somebody who said, for goodness sake, you have equality legislation, Disability Discrimination Act, Section 75 of the Northern Ireland Act, you have even a UN convention. So you have a whole clatter of legislation and policy. So what's your problem? Um, well, first of all, um, it's not it's not it's not sufficient. Um, the question as to what we've got all this le equality legislation, we've got all these international human rights standards that not just the UN Convention but the International Covenant on Economic and Cultural Rights, which which supports the implementation of the various international treaties. And um, we've got all these things. So what is the problem? Well, the problem is they're not being effectively effectively implemented, or um, recommendations for their effective implementation are being ignored. I am optimistic that positive changes will come in the future, but those positive changes will only come in the future if we, as a movement, speak much more cohesively as one voice and have disabled people leading that movement um, uh, as a precondition, articulating that voice, provided they are articulating the voice of their wider membership and those who don't necessarily have the opportunity to go to a programme for government consultations or don't have the opportunity to articulate it because they're, for whatever reason, perhaps they're not able to leave their homes to that extent. I think there is huge opportunities to target those who have traditionally been excluded within the disabled persons movement. And I think if we do that, if we speak with one voice, and if we can identify six or eight common issues that, that, that impacts on the whole sector, we progress will be made. If we don't, and we continue as we are, my hope for the future would be not as high. Let's just put it like, just, let's just put it like that.